Hey there folks, welcome to another Tech Gym video. Hope you're doing okay, locked away in your homes. How quickly we need to learn to adjust to this new normal. There is one thing that hasn't changed. New super hyped, shiny expensive Apple devices and accessories. The main course today, the new iPad Pro 2020. Let's see what this thing has to offer. Right away we see a piece of hardware that looks really familiar. If there are changes to the front, you might need a microscope. Now the iPad is attaching to the highly anticipated new keyboard case, formerly called the Magic Keyboard. This is a surprising design and not consistent at all with the mockups. More on the Magic Keyboard in a few minutes. In case you missed it, it floats. All right, moving along. Apple is promoting their Liquid Retina Display, a very market savvy term for we don't offer OLED. Nothing new here. The sassy fonts might trick you into thinking otherwise, seems to be mostly a wink to the creatives that the iPad is suitable for professional photo and video editing. You get the same two size options, 11 and 12.9 inch. I got an 11 in 2018. I think it was a mistake looking forward to my new 20.9 inch in 2020. Oh, the cameras, all that speculation. Contrary to the predictions, the iPad did not receive the camera array from the iPhone 11 Pro. In terms of cameras, the iPad Pro is getting the iPhone 11 array. So the 12 megapixel wide camera and the 10 megapixel ultra wide camera. The ultra wide has 125 degree field of view with the 2x zoom out. We'll have to wait at least one more year for telephotoing on the iPad. Both cameras shoot 4K at 60 frames per second Apple is calling out improved studio quality microphones. I have a bunch of mics I've been comparing for an upcoming video. Can't wait to put these mics to the test. Anyway, where we were expecting the third camera is the LiDAR scanner, often referred to as a time of flight sensor. LiDAR will significantly augment the iPad's ability to model environments, enabling all the AR apps out there to be more accurate and snappy. Okay, hold on, we are entering the matrix. I don't remember being given any pill options. I imagine we will get a fair amount of innovative apps using LiDAR as developers are forced to sit around in isolation for the foreseeable future. All right, the A12Z Bionic. Apple is throwing us a curveball here by going deeper into the alphabet instead of one plusing the version number. Apple is touting it's faster than most PC laptops, whatever that means. Would be more helpful if we knew which laptops. The 13Z got bumped to eight cores versus six on the 12X. Nine to five Mac claims there's evidence within iOS 13.4 code base that all models will get six gigabytes of RAM, which until now only graced the one terabyte 2018 iPad Pro. Here's to enjoying slightly longer backgrounding sessions. On top of this, Apple did announce an improved thermal design, which should contribute to speed gains. Apple overall is somewhat muted on the performance gains as they have yet to publish their official multipliers in comparison to the A12X Bionic. You know what I mean. If they have proof that their new chip is five times faster than the old one, they let you know. If it's only 10 to 15% faster, they compare it to PC laptops. When we get the iPad Pro, some side-by-side -side comparisons should clear up some of these performance questions. Nonetheless, the 2020 iPad Pro should be well-suited for your crazy, multitasky, neurally engine media editing workflow. Okay, finally, maybe the most anticipated improvement to the 2020 iPad. Trackpad support and Apple's complimentary keyboard with trackpad. As I mentioned earlier, the formal name for this keyboard is the Magic Keyboard. Magic is a nice term for when you f with butterfly keyboards and have to go back. Magic. So as you can see, the iPad attaches magically to the keyboard and freaking floats. It floats, floats. Apple would not pay me unless I repeated that three times. Angels need their wings. As you can see, there is device charging right through the keyboard. That is convenient. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could put our ugly dongles in that port too? Yes, it would, but that is our future, not our present. Dongles for external storage, etc. still need to go straight into the iPad. Looks like we'll get more flexibility in how we would angle the iPad compared to the smart folio. One of my major folio gripes is the limited number of resting positions. 
Also in my lap, it jiggles when I type and feels like it's always about to tip over. The weight balance was definitely off. See, the iPad case is very important to me because without it, the iPad is just a very large, very expensive coaster. I still question whether this case will balance on my lap. Apple said something about cantilever, so that sounds pretty balancy to me. I see two pivot points. However, the allowed angle of pivot for each is not totally clear to me. Maybe this slow motion video helps. Okay, it looks like each pivot point is pushed to its limit. I'd say the bottom hinge is designed to be fully extended and you have like 30 degrees of pivot on the top. Here we're getting a bird's eye view, which makes the case look a lot more traditional, less edgy, more safe. Here you can see that you get a full size backlit keyboard, no complaints, and a trackpad. We finally see the trackpad, a kind of disappointingly small trackpad. Let's compare it to the mock-ups. So I just spent a few minutes talking about a new case and perhaps the biggest advancement to the iPad. And this advancement is not limited to the 2020 iPad. You can buy this case for your 2018 iPad Pro. While this is great, it may demotivate some of you to go out and buy the fancy new iPad if really all you're looking for is a better laptop experience. You also don't need to get this magic keyboard case to get trackpad support. You just need to be running iOS 13.4 or later. Okay, so I talked a lot about this case, but what can we actually do with this trackpad? Well, Apple's not understating it. It's apparently the biggest thing to happen to the cursor since the point and click. They are doing their revolution talk again. I don't need a revolution, I need my barbershop to open. Apple finally embraces the cursor. The cursor, the famous arrow that continues to serve us well and faithfully. As Apple really wants you to use the Magic Keyboard trackpad and not some random mouse, the cursor is formed to look like the tip of your finger, a little round circle. But it also playfully morphs to complement the context. <laughs> okay. Buckle your belts and watch Hair Force One land some gestures. Nice. Hole in one. He's a pro. From downtown. Okay, well I just took a long detour, veering back on track. Okay, yes, Apple Pencil works with the new iPad, no surprise there. However, there is no new pencil kind of a little scuff on the shiny new kit package. For connectivity, the main improvement is Wi-Fi 6 support. What are the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 support? The Verge has a good primer on Wi-Fi 6, I'll link in the description. In short, it increases the top speed to 9.6 gigabytes from 3.5 and improves network connectivity when we start overloading our routers with tens of devices probably won't get the most out of it until your router and most of your gear is updated. That's it. The price starts at $799 and can go up to $1650 if you get all the options. My configuration with a 12.9 inch space gray, 256 gigabyte and Wi-Fi only came out to $1100. Expecting it March 25th. Stay sane folks. We'll get through this. We are tougher than we know. Catch you on the next one.